All right, so this is session three of the Warren Bunnies Down Under uh, with the Gauntlet community. So we are picking up where we left off last time. So to recap a little bit, uh, we had an expedition that set out looking for this potential new Warren site since there are a little some problems with the, the current site between the mine that's being created by the humans next door and the uh, Tasmanian devils that are intruding into the area. And uh, our, our bunnies last time had to also contend with some human uh, environmentalist protesters who are concerned that the mine is destroying the Tasmanian devil habitat. So they, they did manage to get through that. They found this uh, rock outcropping kind of beyond the road, uh, a little ways away from the current Warren. Everything looked pretty cool. And they even found some, some old rabbit holes, uh, or at least what looked like old rabbit holes in that area. Uh, so we are going to kind of pick up as our adventurers return to the Warren. Uh, before we do that, can we just go around and have everybody quickly introduce yourself and uh, introduce your your character? So we'll, we'll just go in the order you are in the character keeper here. So we'll start with Robbie. Tell us about yourself and about Nettle. Okay, my name is Robbie. Uh, he him. I am playing uh, Nettle, he, him. Nettle is a frail looking rabbit who looks like he has been through quite a lot. He has a very singed coat. He only has one ear and uh, it is very apparent that he does not hear very well. However, he does have a particularly sharp uh, sense of sight and uh, he is not necessarily looking to be a leader, but uh, it is the case that at least some of the rabbits uh, do uh, look up to him. And Nettle suspects part of that is just because uh, I look like I've been through hell. And <laughs> they uh, sometimes uh, kind of associate that with uh, being wise and seasoned. Okay, next, Josh, tell us about yourself and about Snowball. Josh, I think you're muted there. My bad. Uh, yeah, so Josh, uh, my character is Snowball. He's runt of the litter, fairly young, uh, and he's kind of just a white fluff ball. Uh, he, you know, fluffy ears, he's a albino, so he's got full white fur, red eyes. Um, last game, he ended up getting his back foot bit and probably cr partially crushed by uh, one of the Tasmanian Devils. And they attacked him, uh, so he's not very fast anymore. Uh, but he is small, so um, he's pretty good at squirming out of, you know, if something larger has him, he can squirm out of it. Um, being that he's small and weak and whatnot, he uh, tries to use his mind as much as possible to, you know, come up with good plans or whatever to get out of a situation. That's about it. All right. And Sarah, tell us about yourself and about Blue. Uh, Sarah, she, her, and Blue, also she, her. Um, Blue's on the younger side. Uh, is one of the rabbits who goes out and explores and like gathers things more often. Uh, but last session, I encountered a Tasmanian devil, and it... He, I believe, um, basically punched me in the face. <laughs> and that has messed up my 
eyes, nose, basically all my senses, so it's harder to focus on things or pay attention. But I have encountered this beast before. So the new move I took was not scared of you. All right. Yeah, that seems pretty appropriate there. Okay, and then next we have James uh, returning to join us again. Uh, so tell us all about yourself and about Sturt. Uh, so I'm James, uh, he, they. Uh, Sturt um, last was hanging out with the group uh, after finding the humans building uh, the mine and uh, got lost on the way, which is sadly why he wasn't here. Um, and I took the move composed because he was uh, trying to keep himself you know, not afraid while well, he was alone and lost, and confused, and eventually found his way back to the Warren on his own. Um, he tends to be very flighty. He's chunky and slow, but he's not very strong. He's kind of smart, but he mostly just wants to be there for his friends and to take care of the Warren. So um, he's been anxiously awaiting their return as well. All right. And David, tell us about yourself and Digger. Yeah, so I'm David, preferred pronouns he, him, and uh, Digger is a buck that is constantly covered in dirt, so we don't know what color his, his fur really is underneath all that dirt, but he loves to dig. He's been digging since pretty much the day he was born. Some rabbits like to take off and get running. He likes to dig. Um, he, we've, we've kind of had an adventure with with him and, and, and Snowball working together to try, or him and Snow, sorry, uh, to try and uh, dig an aqueduct of sorts and that encountered a Tasmanian devil when they were doing so. Um, and now we're exploring other possibilities <laughs> for the Warren. And then uh, I'll also be playing a character that we will introduce shortly, I guess, that is uh, an, an echidna named Spike. All right, sounds excellent and I'm Stentor Danielson, they, them, I'm your uh, MC or whatever this role is called in the war. And I forget every PBTA game has to make up their own special name for the role, but all right. And so then to quickly review our, uh, our lines and veils, uh, we have lines on excessive gore and sexual violence. Uh, is there anything else anyone wants to add to our lines and veils before we get started? All right, so hearing none, uh, and of course, remember that we've got the X card and script change buttons there in Roll for Your Party, uh, or you can just uh, say it in the chat or, or whatever uh, if, you, if we hit some content that you want to edit out or skip past or, or rethink or whatever, so. All right, so we can jump on into our adventure here and uh, I'd actually like to start with Sturt, since you didn't make it. Uh, you said that you had you tried to go along in the adventure and gotten lost and and come back to the Warren. So you've been hanging out at the Warren, anxiously awaiting the return of Nettle, Snowball, uh, Blue, Digger, and Peanut. Uh, and so we've established that there are at least two potentially threatening forces at this warren. Right? And that's this is why the other rabbits went and investigated this possible new warren location. We've got the humans that are digging some sort of a mine uh, just down the road. And we've got the Tasmanian devil that made an appearance. So tell me, during this time that you're waiting for the others to come back, uh, Sturt, which of those two threats is the most worrisome to you? Definitely the Tasmanian devils. I've dealt with humans, but I haven't dealt with those things very much. Okay. And what has what has happened during the time that the other rabbits were gone that has made you feel like the the Tasmanian devil threat level has gone up? What have you seen or heard or smelled uh, or or otherwise sensed around the Warren that has increased your 
worry level about these Tasmanian devils. On my way back after getting lost, I almost ran into two of them. Okay. Well, then in that case, uh, I think you should roll to resist panic to see, uh, see just how scary that experience was for you. I got a five. Five, okay. So that's not very good. Um, all right, so on a miss, take one panic as you cower, hesitate, or flee. Um, so, you know, you come across these two Tasmanian devils uh, as you're making your way back. And so one, and one of them looks even scarier than usual because his nose is like crushed and bloody. Uh, it looks like he's been in a pretty bad scrape and uh, managed to still walk away from it uh, with a hungry look in his eye. And he's with a, another Tasmanian devil. Um, and they, they spot you uh, and clearly are going to, um, they are, they, they've seen you and they're hungry. And so as you, as you look around, you see it's, you're a good distance from the, uh, from the main warren, but you spot another, uh, what looks like a, a hiding place that you can possibly squeeze into uh, that, might get you away from these Tasmanian devils, but it's one that you've actually never noticed before. It's a, a spot you've never explored uh, in your time around the Warren because you're, you know, you're coming back by a weird route because you got lost. Uh, so you could try to make a break for the main Warren, or you could duck into this uh, this mystery hiding spot. I'm not very fast, so I hide. Okay. So you duck into this mystery hiding spot, and it's uh, this is something that you you're able to see with your keen rabbit eyes. It's kind of down among some rocks, uh, and the the Tasmanian devils kind of give give chase for a little bit and get uh, kind of give up on it because they see you haven't gone towards the main warren and that seems to be what they're interested in but as you duck into this uh this mystery spot you can definitely smell that uh something has been living here and there's not a rabbit smell in this in this hole but it's a it's a fairly, once you squeeze in through the kind of entryway, it is a fairly spacious hole. There's plenty of room for you to hang out uh, in here. Does it smell like um, our Warren? Does it smell like Wombat? Well, why don't you roll to pay attention and we'll see what you can find out about this place. Is that plus shrewd? Uh, yeah. That's a six, so I don't think I know. Uh, no, well, no, you can ask one, one question, uh, and I'll let you ask, uh, you know, what animal this smells like. Uh, we can add that to the list. Um, but if you ask that, you will open yourself up to danger. Sturt wants to know. Okay, so you're you're sniffing at this, and it dawns on you 
uh, that this is in fact a, a wombatish smell just as a big furry paw clamps over your your mouth and nose and you um, hear a kind of deep rumbly voice whispering in your ear, what are you doing in our hole, bunny? You can see out of the corner of your eye because rabbits can see like almost all the way around their head. So you can see out of the corner of your eye, you know, a, a big uh, nose and some big like chewing teeth uh, that you definitely recognize as the face of a, a wombat. And he's got his like uh, hand grabbed around you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was just trying to hide from the Tasmanians. The devils, they're evil. They're going to eat me. I'm sorry, I'll leave. I'm sorry. Are you bringing the devils here? Did they follow you? No, they gave up. They got bored. And he kind of drops the paw off of you. And the wombat says, well, I certainly hope you're right. There have been far too many Tasmanian devils around here for my liking. What do you know about the devils? One of them has its face all messed up, like it got in a fight. The, the wombat looks worried. What could wound a, a Tasmanian devil? They're the most ferocious predators. That must be even bigger and scarier than a Tasmanian devil if, it could, if you could beat one of them up. Oh, this is, this is much concern to us. It could have been the humans. And the wombat kind of shakes, shakes their head and says, Oh, silly bunny, don't you know? The humans brought the Tasmanian devils here. Don't you know? This isn't Tasmania. This is the Northern Territory. The humans brought them here. Can I roll to resist panic? Because I am afraid of wombats. That was my yeah. secret. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's have you roll to resist panic then. Seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, so you can keep it together, but uh, bump your panic up by one. And because uh, the, the wombat can see that you're nervous, that you're visibly like shaking uh, after all of this. Um, and uh, they say, well, you can hide out here for a little while, Bunny. But don't come any deeper into our hole. And we expect you to be gone by evening when we go out uh, to find something to eat. And then the wombat kind of turns around and waddles back deeper into the hole. Thank you. So this is a good chance then to uh, switch over to see how the rest of you all are making your way back from the uh, this potential new Warren site. And I'm going to say that, you know, so Peanut was with you on your mission last time. Uh, and Noelle is not here tonight. So... I'm going to say that uh, the peanut stayed behind to keep an eye on this potential new site. Oh, yeah, Sarah. I believe that one of the things Noella said before they left was that they wanted to be taken in by a human. Mm hmm. Oh, this is true because uh, peanut was a, a hutch bunny uh, before this. So yeah, so let's let's actually revise that a little bit. Um, 
So you've all come back from the the other site. And if you remember, there were the, the human protesters on the road, kind of trying to block the road so that the mining equipment couldn't come in and so forth. And so you've made your way back to the road and it's night. So the humans seem to have, uh, you know, they're not out waving their signs or anything anymore. They've set up some tents. They look like they've got a few like campers and stuff that some of them are in. Um, it's, you know, they, they've mostly uh, packed it in for the night. But as you get close, you, you kind of look around among yourselves and realize that uh, the peanut is no longer with you. So who, who do you think would notice Peanuts disappearing first? I feel like Blue probably would since she's the one always finding other rabbits. That's true, but uh, I can't pay attention to anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you took your, your scar there. Yeah, so maybe maybe Blue was trying to keep an eye on Peanut this whole time and uh, missed the disappearance. Oh, no. <laughs> the guilt. Yeah. Yeah, do, the, do any of the others of you notice that Peanut has gone missing? Maybe since I'm slower with my leg, I'm kind of at the back and mm -hmm. I'm looking around. You know, I look behind me. You know, Nell, have you seen Peanut? Where's Peanut at? They're gone. Wow. I don't see Peanut anywhere. Where did they get to? Nettle, Nettle, look for her. Yeah, and, and Nettle really is on high alert now and looking around and, you know, takes a few hops, scans around carefully, then takes a few, few hops in another direction to kind of look in that direction to see mm -hmm. if, if, there's any sign of what might have become of Peanut or where Peanut might have gone off to. So it sounds like you're trying to pay attention there. Okay. So. Um. And this is with my site, which gives me plus two, so I got a 12. Okay, so you're doing good there. Uh, so you can ask me uh, two of those questions, or if there's another question that doesn't fit that, that you really want to ask, uh, I'm pretty flexible about those questions. But you can ask two things. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I mean, mainly, um, you know, I'm interested in, in, in Peanut, so... I suppose, I mean, at the last you have this one with the blank, you know, mm -hmm. how could I get uh, to where Peanut went or how could I get to a place where I could, you know, find out what is what has happened to mm -hmm. Peanut? Okay. So if you creep forward among the... Uh, the human tents and cars and stuff a little bit, you you can get kind of a, a line of sight down a bit of a gap between a few of the things. And you see a, uh, a little human boy who's there because, you know, some of the, the humans have brought their children to the protest. Um, but you see this, this little human boy and um, you see him like grab something 
and uh, kind of shriek in excitement. And he, he's clearly holding something up uh, to his chest uh, and kind of turns to a an adult human woman that's behind him. And she's like trying to talk in a calming voice to him. And she, she reaches out to, to pet whatever it is he's got in his arms. And uh, you know enough to know what it looks like when a human is petting a rabbit. Um, so, so Nettle will turn back to the other rabbits with a very distressed look on his face and keeps looking back and forward from, you know, back to his rabbit companions and then back to uh, what the humans are doing. I, I guess, you know, since I get uh, some other questions, when I'm looking at the humans, I will want to know what is the greatest danger to me in this situation because they're, they're fairly close to us. Uh -huh. this point. Yeah. Uh, so I think the, the greatest danger to you is going to be if you try to mess with any of the human stuff, because these are, you know, these are environmentalists. They seem to support the reintroduction of Tasmanian devils into the mainland ecosystems. They're not real happy about invasive species like rabbits. Uh, so, you know, that's one thing that the two human groups seem to be able to agree on is that rabbits are pests uh, and should be eliminated. So if you mess with any of their stuff, then they're going to decide to, uh, you know, decide some invasive species need to be dealt with uh, at this point. Okay. And then I, I guess for the third hold, I, I would ask, uh, where can I flee to with, with really the idea of like, in terms of us getting back, like, like mm -hmm. fleeing in the sense of getting away from the humans and towards our Warren, uh, mm -hmm. from what I can assess from the layout of things right now, where, where would be the, the best place for me and my companions to go? So, uh, Part way down, you know, kind of towards one end of the area that uh, the the sort of encampment is blocking this road. There's uh, a quite large truck that someone has parked sideways across the road to kind of block all traffic coming from either direction. But you also notice that you know because it's it's just a, a one lane each direction kind of highway. You know, it's not that wide, so this one truck can block the whole thing. But that means that if you were to just crawl under this truck, then nobody would really notice you under there. You know, it's tray has got like multiple sets of wheels, and it's you know pretty dark underneath there. So uh, you spot this, you know, basically this tunnel that you can just uh, slide through to get across the. Um, get across the road and out of the way of the humans without drawing any attention. So if, if all you want to do is sneak back across that road, that a truck is a golden opportunity to do that. Yeah. So, so I think what Nettle does is he, he'll hop back to the companions and say, I, peanut, they've got peanut and they've taken him. And I don't think there's anything we can do about peanut, but, I, I do see a way across the road uh, and I, I don't think it would be wise for us to go back for peanut, but we could take our opportunity now to get across the, 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 the black river and, and, and get back to our Warren. Like trying, trying to see where, where Peanut has gone and like, we can't leave him, but also people. Yeah. And I think you all probably heard the shriek uh, when the kid picked up Peanut. So only Nettle saw what was going on, but you, I think you all 
heard the shriek and recognized the word bunny in it. Because again, you don't you don't really know human language, but you've you've kind of picked up on what the word bunny sounds like when humans say it. Um, I think like right in front of uh, blue, like right, right, right near blue, um, there is this echidna spike and uh, like he, he, he's just been hanging out um, and he's like, oh, well, that's nice. Children's children's found a pet pet bunny. Super excited about it. What's all the fuss about here? Who are you? like straightening out the quills and like spike they call me spike see Sp spike can you help help what i'm just passing through here no. wait i like point spike points at digger and it's like i've seen you digging you like digging don't you we could be digging together we should do we should be digging together why aren't we digging together? And Digger's like, well, I don't, I don't know. I think I've seen you, but we could use help digging, right, guys? We need help. We need all the help we can get with that if we're going to be moving the Warren. You sure about this digger? It's not a rabbit. I mean, it's kind of scary looking. What's scary about him? It's spiky. Look at the spikes. But they're like not like they're not like teeth spikes or feet spikes. They're back spikes. Have you ever seen a Tasmanian devil? Digger or oh, spike? spike. <clears throat> I don't see so good. But uh I think I've seen something called a devil before. You're talking about the things they scream. They scream real loud. Yeah, those. Yeah, I've heard those. I've, I've, I've come close around. to them. Yeah, they talk I just, to you. I just, I just get in a bundle, real tight bundle, and they leave me alone. He smells okay. He he doesn't smell as bad as those devils and wombats. Yeah, I think there's like a small like bug or something like wandering by and like I just the tongue just like licks out and, and grabs it and pulls it it's like I, I think I kind of hop over and kind of gently you know kind of flick one of the spikes or something and like these would be handy to have when the devils come I wish I had spikes like these I gotta have spikes like these I can't run like a rabbit I move like you. Yeah, I, I kind of wiggle my foot, and I'm like, oh, I'm more like you now. Hmm. Maybe we can come up with some way to help you. Anyways, I'm the only one of me around here, I think. You see, I tried to bundle up. I was crossing the, I was tr crossing the Black River, and, and, I, and I had to bundle up. Because one of those one of those rubber runners was coming, so I bundled up, and then I got bounced real far, and I don't know, I don't know where everyone else is at this point. So I figured I I stick with the friendliest animals I can find, and you all seem friendly enough. What do you say? Be pals? Dig holes? Looking at metal. I I think uh, I think Spike could be a friend for us. I think Spike could be useful to us, then I think maybe we could be useful to him. I mean, we've, we've always been a Warren that, you know, takes on uh, strangers. So I, I, I think right now though, we, we need to think about getting to that, that new, that new possible Warren. And, and for that, we need to get back to our, to our friends at the old Warren and get across that, Black River, and I think we should get a move on it. Yeah. And then Blue turns to Spike and says, okay, you're a rabbit. All right. 
I'm a rabbit. I just can't run like a rabbit, but I dig. And you're a rabbit, Diggs, so I'm like him. Digger just nods. And we're off. All right. So you're are you gonna just sneak under that truck? Yeah, I mean, Nettle will 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 say I I I think I've scoped this out, and and it looks like that 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 thing laying across the Black River, it it, it it's kind of blocking things, and I I think it would give us cover. Yeah, let's run under the rubber runner. That's a good plan. It's not moving right now. All right. Yeah. So. We've established that if you're just sneaking through uh, underneath the underneath that truck, then humans aren't going to see you. Uh, you'll be able to just cross on over uh, and then get into the desert on the other side, on the side of your warren. And as you approach your warren, we're going to say the sun is now starting to come up uh, by this point. As you approach your, so I guess that kid was up like real early in the morning, uh, which I realize is unusual for little kids uh, that like to sleep in, but that's what the story needs is, is a, an yeah, early I mean, needs to get up at five in the morning, so yeah. you know, there's yeah. somewhere kids out there. Yeah. Actually, I think the principle, I don't have kids myself, but if I remember from when I was a kid, the principle is that when you need kids to get up early, they want to sleep in. But when you want them to sleep in, such as on Christmas morning, they're they're up at the crack of dawn. So, all right. So, but regardless, uh, you're, you're coming back and you're within sight of the Warren and you see some creatures moving around uh, but they are clearly not rabbits. They are clearly a pair of Tasmanian devils. And they're kind of roaming around, uh, sniffing the ground. And, uh, you know, giving each other meaningful looks as they go. Steering clear. <laughs> And they are, they are right in your, your path to the Warren. You're, you're pretty far out now, so I won't make you roll to resist panic uh, just yet. But, you know, you're going to have to go through uh, the panic zone. You're going to have to go close enough to them to really worry that they're going to see you. Uh, to get back to where you know the Warren is located. They don't seem to have figured out where the entrance to the Warren is yet, but they're close enough that uh, you know, you'd have to go right past them to get back to the Warren. How close are they to the Warren, like? Um, they are, we'll say a couple hundred meters uh, well, like a hundred meters from the main Warren entrance. Go over to a uh, digger and I'm like, maybe, maybe we can, you know, with, with your friend now, a spike here, maybe we can trap them underground. Like we lead them into a dead end, and if you or Spike digs a hole for one of us to get out, the other one can close the other end of the tunnel up, and you know, the one that did the tunnel or the hole to get out can close it up after whoever whoever's the, the bait. I mean, maybe. We kind of tried that though. We tried to bury them before, and 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 it and they're really. It looks like they can dig real good too. But maybe if we do both ends, we could still trap them. I don't know. What what do you what do you all think? 
Can you do it fast? But maybe they could be trapped down there long enough that we can get everyone out and to the new Lord Warren. Maybe. It might be worth a try. It doesn't look like we can go around. They're right in our way, so... Yeah. What if... What if we tried something new? What if we dug a hole and got them into it and then we dropped something real heavy on them? Maybe maybe we don't need earth to bury them. Maybe we need to bury them with, with rocks or something. How are we going to move the rocks? Well, we'll get them real close to the edge, and that way when we get them down there, we can just push them in. Just kick him with your back feet. Good swift kick. And I like thump on the ground. Kind of go back to Spike again and do the same kind of thing I did earlier with the Spike and I'm like, do these come off? I don't, I actually don't know if a kid is like, Sparks will come off. I imagine. <laughs> I imagine. I think you can like pull them off, but I think it would be like pulling a hair because they're they're modified hairs. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I don't know quite how they, they work. I think they evolved from <laughs> just hairs, but um, <laughs> so I, my I've never handled an echidna. My guess is that you could you could yank them out. Uh, but you know, it would probably hurt a little bit, just like if you were pulling some hairs off of somebody. Yeah. So, so Spike is like, like stroking them, stroking them back, and like making them smooth. You know, they bristle yeah. when he gets nervous. They, they bristle they're, a little bit when he asked. Yeah. They're actually there are probably you know occasional ones that fall out on their own. You know, just like if you comb your hair, you know, some hair comes away, or if you brush a rabbit, you know, there's some loose fur that comes away. So there's probably a few loose ones if you really need a few. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I could give you a few, but, but if you start pulling them, it hurts. Like, like if I pulled on your fur, what, what, did, what were you thinking? I don't know. Maybe, I mean, maybe we can, you know, kind of make give ourselves a little protection too for those trying to, you know, get the, get the devils attention or whatever, you know. You know, an another idea is one of us could just try to try to divert them, just kind of get them to chase them, and that would give the, the rest a chance to get back to the Warren and maybe get the, the Warren out of here before they were able to return. If we can trap them, though, they'd be trapped for longer. If we just run away and they chase us, they'll come back, and maybe yeah. we won't. Yeah, and that yeah, that that's true. I mean, we would have to be very fast. I think if we were just luring him away, Digger, do you think you could dig fast enough? Um, Digger looks appraisingly at Spike, and looks at his his very well adapted digging tool hands. It's like, I think we could do it. I think between the two of us and, and if you all pitch in, we could probably dig something big. And, and if some people could be moving rocks to the edge, we could, we could have this ready. But we still probably will need a fast runner, somebody who can, who can lure them in. So I somebody can, should save I their strength to be a runner. Sounds like we have a plan. <laughs> so I will also throw in that since you're you're sitting there making your plan, and Sturt, if you were to poke your head out of the hole that you ran into, uh, you'd be able to see where uh, these other rabbits 
are. You'd be able to see them over there. Um, and you could you could join them if you would like. Uh, James, you muted. Start, we'll look around for those uh, devils first to make sure they're not too close and then bolt for uh, my friends. Okay, so why don't you roll to bolt then? That's a one. That's a one. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Um, so okay. <laughs> All right. So I will. I will give you a choice. Uh, so you're you're taken off for it, and so you can either run into the devils or you can run into some of the humans which danger would you like to uh, expose yourself to you know i haven't run into humans yet today so let's go with humans all right uh so you you run towards them and you're ducking behind rocks and the tufts of the grass and so forth uh, and in your concern for getting out of the way of the devils, you, uh, stumble onto the, uh, into the, the human encampment. And there is a human who has just come out of one of the, uh, one of the, um, campers that was set up. And so he comes down the, you know, a couple little stairs from the door because, uh, you know, the sun's just starting to come up and, you know, his hair's all messed up from sleeping and he kind of yawns and stretches and looks right down uh, where you're uh, hiding behind a, uh, a tuft of grass and, uh, reaches down and grabs you by by the scruff and picks you up and kind of looks at you like what have we here so you should up your panic by one and you are now you've been grabbed by a people i'm going to try to get ungrabbed by a people okay <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna do what i can there to squirm and okay, bite okay so so you can roll to struggle, so that's plus strong. Six. Six, okay. And so you can, in this move, you can take panic one for one to add to your roll. So if you want to... You could take one more panic to bump yourself up to a seven, uh, in which case you're able to wriggle free if you're willing to take a scar. You could also uh, take um, four panic and get all the way up to a 10, uh, but that'll probably max out your panic as well. Yeah, I can only afford that one. Okay, so you're gonna, are you gonna do that? Bump it up to a seven? Bump it up to, yeah, bump it up to seven. Okay, so you can wriggle free, but you're going to take a scar. So scar means you're going to choose one move. It can be one of your character moves, or it could be one of the basic moves. And you're going to jot down that you can no longer use that move at all. And so uh, why, don't you, why don't you think about which move you want to mark off and... I'll let you kind of describe your escape based on that, you know, describe it in a way that explains why you've lost uh, the ability to do that move. And uh, meanwhile, turn back around to the other group who have been debating how to handle these uh, Tasmanian devils who are sniffing around. And the longer you talk, the closer they're getting to where you know the main Warren uh, entrances are.
so um i i guess uh i would say that i can no longer um bolt okay um so I, I struggle to get free of the human, but it's hard. I'm I'm a little bigger than the other rabbits, and I'm not very athletic. I'm I'm slow. I'm not very strong, and I bite and I kick. And the human, uh, when I bite them, kind of shakes me to get me off and drops me because they don't like being bitten. Mm -hmm. um, and I fall and I get my foot crushed a little bit there, so I'm not going to be able to do much with uh, bolting ever again. Okay. So you're you're unable to bolt, but you did squirm free uh, from that guy, uh, and yeah, you you drop to the ground and scurry away, and he seems disinclined to chase you because uh, you know he just woke up, uh, and it's not worth it to him. And you hear him say a few uh, few four letter Australian words um, as you scurry away uh, and you're able to join the others as they are finalizing their plan for what to do. Start. <laughs> Hi. Hey, where have you been? Uh, hiding from devils and then nearly kidnapped by a human. Those? Uh-huh. At least the wombats didn't kill me. You saw the wombats? I accidentally went in there dead. Did they do that to your leg? No, that was the human. Peanut got taken by humans. Peanut? Presumably you guys have met. <laughs> One of the other rabbits. And you mentioned wombats. Where, where are the wombats? Kind of point over at um, where, their, where their entrance to their den is. But probably don't go in there. They weren't very happy that I did. Can... <clears throat> Did you tell them about the devils? Yeah. What did they say? Uh, that I better not have brought them to them. Okay. I was thinking maybe we could get them to help it if they're, if they're grumpy. If, if you want to ask them, I don't want to go back there. I don't know that we we should ask them, but but they might they might be useful to us right now. Uh, Digger, do you, why don't you start digging, and we'll keep an eye on the devils. But if those devils get too close to the warren, I think we're we're going to have to do some type of diversion to get them away from our to get them away from our warren. It would be disastrous if they if they found the warren. Okay. Me and Spike will start to build the devil trap. Stir the the wombat, their warren. Was it bigger than ours? I don't know. I only was in the entrance. I only saw saw two of them and one of them didn't really talk to me much. But it was really close by. Do you think if we said we were moving, they might want to take our warn? Um, maybe. I don't know. We could we could ask, but they're really scary. How long is it gonna take you to dig, Digger? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Cinder, what do you think between two 
diggers, a, a digger and a, an echidna digging? Um, I think it's to, to dig out something big enough that you could trap one of the devils in. At this point, would... Well, actually, let's... Let's have you just roll for it, and we'll see if uh, you're able to, if you'd be able to dig enough to trap a devil in before they find the entrance to uh, the Warren. Because they are getting pretty close because you spent a while debating your strategy here. So why don't you roll the dig so that's plus strong, and then you can get the uh, plus one from your engineer move too. I think uh, while they're digging, Snowball probably suggests to Nettle, you know, let's uh, let's go get closer and hide nearby them so we're ready to start moving uh, whenever it's the trap is ready. I, I, I have an idea as well. Why don't you stay and hide here? I'm going to go and scurry over towards where those wombats are and it may be that if if we need to distract them that i could i could distract the devils to go over to the wombats that's not very nice but okay i think uh, i think the wombats can take care of themselves they can take on the the devils they, they have a better chance with the devils than we would they were they were nice to me though i they let me stay. They let me hide, even though they were scary. We shouldn't be yes. bad to them. And I did warn them, but they made me promise I wouldn't bring the devils to them. No, but we can ask. Hey, hey Stuart, how about you just come help me move rocks? You're a lot stronger than me. We need to get the rocks ready, too, right? I, I guess, but I'm... I'm not that strong either. Look, we'll have to, if we want the Warren to be safe, we all have to do our part. So. I'd, I'd rather move rocks than go see the, the, the wombats again. See? Uh, that's better. Now, uh, come and help me find some good sized rocks. And we'll push them together. Okay. Yeah. And I see in the chat there that uh, we got a twelve on that dig move. So you, uh, you know, the a rabbit and an echidna working together are having no trouble uh, scraping out a, a nice big hole here. Um, so, so that's not going to be an issue in your plan. And I think Nettle and I still do want to go talk to the um, wombats. 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 All right. So yeah. So why don't we follow the uh, the wombat mission here? So you're headed over to their to their burrow. Yeah. Okay. And, and and while doing that, I'll I'll keep an eye on on what the the devils are are doing. Hmm. Yeah, they're they're sniffing around, kind of circling, because they can clearly it's clear that they can smell rabbit in this area, mm -hmm. but there's just so much rabbit smell because so many rabbits run around in the area close to the Warren that you know they can't trace any one path back to exactly where the entrance uh, is, and it seems like the rabbits still at the Warren have blocked up the entrance in some way uh, to hide it so that they don't, the devils don't see it. Although, you know, the devils don't have great eyesight to begin with. So they're kind of like making a spiral around getting closer and closer to where the Warren entrance is. So if you want to uh, head over to the, uh, the wombat area, I will ask you to either bolt or sneak, depending on how you want to approach this, because that will put you at some risk of getting noticed by the uh, by the devils. 
probably sneaking. Yeah. All right. Why don't you both roll that and see how sneaky you can be? And this is plus shrewd. Seven. And I got a nine. All right. So each of you get to pick one out of the list behind cover, silent, downwind, or no tracks. Um, downwind, maybe? We've established that they don't have great eyesight. Or... Yeah, that, that sounds that sounds good. So we'll be down, we'll both be downwind. Mm. Okay. All right, so yeah, we've got a, a little bit of a breeze blowing and it is blowing kind of from you, or sorry, from the the devils towards you. So you can smell them. Uh, you can smell the, uh, you know, the, the heavy musk of a predator uh, on the prowl, uh, but then they clearly are not gonna pick up on you uh, until you, you're you getting very close to the wombat hole uh, when one of the, the devils, as they're kind of coming around on their, uh, you know, they're kind of circles. Uh, one of you steps on uh, what you thought was a, a rock, but it turns out to be a, a little uh, mouse-like marsupial that lets out quite a squeak. And the, the devil that's kind of coming around, hears that, uh, raises her head and uh, kind of locks eyes with you uh, and you are you're close enough to the where you've, you've been able to already see the entrance to the wombat hole so you're close enough that you can duck in there you won't have to roll for it but the devil definitely saw you going there just too late for them to actually get over there and grab you So yeah, we run to the Wombat Warren. I, I don't want to go super deep. Yeah. But just call out like, hello? Okay, yeah. So you come into you know, what I already described for, uh, for start there. There's you know kind of a, a nice spacious hole. It reminds you a lot of the holes that your Warren was in, since those were former Wombat Warrens, but with a much stronger Wombat smell in them because they're still inhabited. Um, and so you you call out and you hear a little shuffling and snuffling from deeper in the burrow and eventually a big furry head, the big blunt nose, pokes around the corner uh, and kind of locks its beady little eyes on you and kind of mutters, more bunnies? Yes. Um, Sturt said that you let them stay here for a little bit earlier today. And, uh, well, we were, we were just wondering because we're going to be moving soon and we, we live in what used to be a, a wombat house. And we were wondering if, when we moved, if you wanted it. Um, but there's, there's devils around and we're, we're maybe wondering, please, if, if you could maybe help us leave and then you can take it, please. Okay, so it sounds like you're trying to speak plainly here. Yeah. So you need to roll and add your shrewd. That 
That is a seven. It's a seven. Okay. Uh, so they'll do as you ask, provided you meet one of their demands now. Okay. So you're, so tell me exactly what you're trying to get them to do. Um, basically chase off the Tasmanian devils long enough for us to get out. And in return, we will give them if they would like it, um, mm -hmm. our emptied Warren. Okay. Um, so let's see. So the, uh, this, the swamp bat kind of considers it for a moment and, uh, they say, you're asking a lot of us bunnies, but we do have some pretty cramped quarters here. Uh, ever since that, that bunny named Ash chased us out of our old holes. We've been wanting to get them back for some time now. But there are two threats in this area. There's the mm -hmm. devils, yes. There's also the human mining operation. When we've been out, when we've been out to feed, we can smell it. With our big wombat noses, we can smell the unnatural smell of the human mind. So we'll help you with the devils, but you have to ensure that that human, that if we move into that Warren, and so for context, I'm envisioning this, that they're kind of like, you've got the mine, and then you've got your Warren, and then the wombat hole is like, you know, to the other side. So they're farther away from the mine. Um, the, so the wombat says, you need to ensure us that the humans, the human mind is not going to interfere with our inhabitation of those holes. Because I know they're closer to that mine. If the main mine were to uh, expand their operations, uh, they might make that Warren uninhabitable for us. And then we wouldn't be getting anything out of the deal. But if you can, if you can find a way to, uh, to disrupt the, what the humans are up to there, then we'll consider that to be, uh, to be adequate, uh, payback for risking ourselves to, uh, deal with these devils. You want us so. to go against the people. Yes. Rabbits are sneakier and, and faster than wombats. I'm sure you can think of something. That sounds like a, a reasonable deal to me. I, 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 I think uh, I could figure out a way to, to deal with those humans using my sneaky rabbit abilities. And the one that says it's a deal then and offers a, a paw to kind of shake on the deal. So do you, do you shake on this deal? Yeah. What are you going to do? Okay. All right. So why don't we uh, take a quick break here and then we can come back and see how this plan uh, all comes together. So uh, I have, it's 23 after the hour on my clock. So why don't we come back at uh, 9.30 or whatever 30 in your time zone. Sound good? All right, see you in seven minutes.
All right, looks like everybody's back. Um, all right, so we've got a hole dug. Uh, we've got some rocks piled up. We've got some wombats recruited. So you, I think that uh, Blue and Nettle will can reconvene with the the others at this uh, spot where you're setting everything up, uh, and the uh, you know because by this point you know the the devil saw you duck into the the wombat hole, but. Um, the wombats have kind of a back entrance, so you can come out another way since they're on your side now. Um, and so as you're you're going over, there's we'll say that there's two wombats that have uh, come with you, and the the lead one, the one you had negotiated with before, is okay, bunnies. What exactly is it that you need us to do here? So we see two devils sniffing around over there next to uh, our new Warren. And I quickly explain like the deal that we've made. They're, they're going to move in after we're gone. We just need them distracted long enough. We were going to trap them, but if that doesn't work, and there's two of them. Yeah, so if, if you can if you can deal with those wombats, we will talk to the bunnies in the warren and let them know that the warren is now your warren, and then we will vacate it and we'll go and we will follow through on our end of the deal. Okay, so just for me me to understand, you just need the wombats to distract the devils. For a decent right length now. of time, though, because we, we have to evacuate. Yeah, because yeah, that, that, that we need to we need either distract or chase them away or something so that we can get the rabbits that are in the warren uh, out of the warren for the wombats. But but do it safely so that that the that the devils wouldn't be there to pounce mm -hmm. on us or the other rabbits from the warren. Okay, so the the whole thing of trapping them in the hole, that part of the plan is not happening now. I think like we might be able to make that work for one of them, but I don't know about two. I guess they're kind of insurance. <laughs> Okay. No, I'm just I'm trying to make sure that I understand what you're what we're doing and what you're wanting the uh the wombats to do here. So all right. So the, the wombats kind of look at each other and, and nod their heads and they kind of clasp paws and do a little like pep talk thing to each other, uh, a little kind of wombat chant. Um, that's in the secret wombat language that uh, the bunnies don't understand. Um, but so then they uh, sort of trundle off uh, at full speed towards the devils and the devils kind of lift their heads up. Oh my gosh. Um, and so this is, this is something I, I feel like I know that in PBTA, the GM is never supposed to roll, but I kind of want to roll some dice just to decide how well this all goes down. Cause it doesn't really fit any of the existing moves because none of you are currently doing anything. Uh, you did your move to convince the wombats to help out. Um, so if, if folks don't mind, I'm just going to just make, a, just just make a new move. move. Straight up two d six. Well, I mean the um, game. The game lets you make new moves. Yeah, we just put yeah. a name to it, like like manipulate wombats. Like that uh -huh. could be the name of the move. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm just gonna roll this just to 
give myself an idea of how to make this all play out. And I got a six on that. Uh, so this is gonna, it's gonna make all your lives interesting here. Um, oh, so no. the, the wombats go running towards uh, the devils uh, and, you know, kind of shouting at them like, hey, you devils, get away from there. That's, that's our bro now. Um, and the, the devils have been sniffing around and um, you see they kind of look up, they see the wombats coming. Uh, and, you know, the, these wombats, these are big uh, you know, animals. Um, they are, they're bigger than the, the devils are by a little bit um, and definitely bulkier than the devils. And so the devils kind of look at each other and then they disappear. And the, the wombats come, you know, charging in right up to where the devils were and stop. And they, they look around and they're very confused um, because they don't see the devils there anymore. And they start sniffing around but it's clear that they're having now the same problem that the devils were having before where, because you know, the devils have been circling this area so much, their scent is all over everything. You can't pick up a, a trail that goes in any particular direction. Um, and so the, you know, the wombats sniff around a bit and they look around confused. And finally the, the lead one, um, we'll call, we'll call the, um, that the lead wombat, the one, that um, the one that uh, Sturt met earlier and that negotiated and shook paws with, uh, with Blue. We'll, we'll call that Wombat Wombert. And then the other one is Wombertha. Um, so uh, Wombert kind of turns back to all of you and just goes, shrugs like i don't know i don't know what happened uh is the devils just disappeared you know I, I think what i will do is say blue go tell digger and the others what's going on and to be ready to maybe activate the trap or maybe to run I'm going to go up to Wombert and see if I can get a closer look at what exactly is going on over there. doesn't make any sense that the devils would just disappear. They have to have gone somewhere, but I think yeah. I need to get up closer to see what's going on. Okay. Got it. And, you know, Nettle will, will kind of go bouncing over to, to where Wombert is and, and try to get a closer look at, at what may have happened to the, to the devils. All right. Uh, yes, yeah, so you you head on over there to the area. It's right around where the front door of the the Warren usually is, uh, and the the two wombats look terribly confused. Um, so why don't you uh, roll to pay attention to see what you can see about what's going on over here? Um, so, and, and would this be involving sight? Um, probably, unless okay. you want to use a, a different. Well, cause, cause with we, my, with my special move, if it, if it's involving sight, then I get, well, I get a, yeah, then I get the, I, I guess it's plus two for okay. shrewd and is this the, um, And, um, well, I, I guess it, it is, yeah, a seven plus is treated as a 10 plus, but I, I think I get, okay. a, I have a 10 anyway. Okay. 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 All right. So, yeah. So what do you want to find out? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just get a, a bead on, uh, 
guess let me look at the I, I i really just want to get a beat on what i think is the most um uh likely place that those devils are um so okay so i can just kind of tell you about that that as you're looking around because you know exactly where the entrances are here um they've been the the wombats are a little confused because uh you know, they've never actually lived in this war and they just remember the stories of the uh, the sneaky rabbit Ash that uh, kind of tricked them out of their holes and, and forced them to leave, but they've never actually been here, but you've lived here your whole life. You know where the entrances are supposed to be and you're, you happen to be pretty close to one of those and you see that it is, uh, where the entrance is supposed to be is filled up with freshly churned dirt. And uh, in that dirt, as you are inspecting it, you see a few uh, black hairs that are clearly not the color of any of the rabbits in the war and clearly not the color of the wombats, uh, but very much the color of the devils. So you see a few of their hairs kind of mixed into this freshly churned dirt that's blocking the entrance to the burrow. Yeah, and I, I mean, when Nettle sees that, he'll turn to Wombert and say, that, that's where they've gone. They've gone into your, they've gone into your warren. They dug down into our warren? Oh, that's, that's not good. You know, Tasmanian devils are fierce fighters in close quarters. Well, they kind of look at each other and um, say, well, we could try to dig through the front door here. We could try to dig in the back way. What do you think? This is, this is your plan, Bunny. What do you want us to do? Uh, why don't, okay, and, and I'm assuming that this Warren has a number of different entrance points to it. Yeah, there are a few different entrance points. Um, and yeah, and you also kind of know where the tunnels go uh, underground. Yeah. So I, I think Nettle will say, I, why don't you start digging here and I will see if I can go through another entrance and lure the devils out. And one way or another, we'll get them out of the, out of your burrow. And I'll, I'll also get the other rabbits out. Yeah. So just as you're you're saying this, uh, you hear a a rabbit scream, um, and kind of up from around the other side of this little bit of a, a rocky uh, area where the the warren is, in the direction where you know there's one of the warren's back doors, uh, you see Dewdrop, one of your fellow rabbits in the warren, come running out covered in dirt and looking really scuffed up uh, and just, you know, screaming. Uh, and so she comes running towards you uh, saying, there's a devil in the warren. There's devils in the warren. And then she lays eyes on the two wombats and kind of stops and screams, and there's wombats in the warren. And there's wombats in the warren and turns and goes the other direction. Um, <laughs> I, I think, you know, Nettle will say, you know, get a grip on yourself. We have got to save the rest of the rabbits in the warren. The, the wombats will help us, but we've got to try to get the rabbits out. And Nettle will try to make his way 
he'll he'll kind of go towards that entrance that Dewdrop came out of and make his way into the to the warren there and yell for the rabbits that they need to they need to clear out of the warren that they're they're devils in there okay so while you're doing that what are the rest of you up to um i come back and told them what's happened that it looks like oh yeah i don't think i know that actually but the the wombat or the devils disappeared yeah because only nettle has figured out exactly uh but the rest of you will eventually hear dewdrop screaming there are devils in the warren and there are wombats in the warren so i think i'd go in we have to go back and help them we can't let them die yeah okay okay so you're all are you all gonna go join nettle uh Me and uh, start at least. You guys in? We've got a trap. We've got a trap. We want to want to try and get them out here into the trap. So if that means going in and luring them out, I think that's probably what Digger's up to. I think Spike is just hanging tight. Okay, then we'll we'll lead them out. Yeah, I think Snowball is. Yeah, you know, he sucks it up. And, uh, yeah. We gotta save the others. We gotta get them out of there and lead them to the trap. That's the only thing we can do. We need people to trigger the trap if we can get one of them out here. Can you guys stay here? Stuart and I are gonna go. All right. So what are you doing? Following metal in. Okay. I will also follow metal. Okay, so we got. I think all the rabbits. Certain. I think all the rabbits are going, but like Spike is hanging out here, and he'll he'll yeah. be the one to trigger the trap if we need to. Okay. Yep. So, are, are you all going in through the same entrance or different or? Uh. If there's another entrance all- nearby. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah maybe let's split up and go down different entrances, cover more ground. Okay. Yeah, let's say that there are there are three entrances by which you could easily reach this section of the warren. So there's the one where the devils seem to have uh, burrowed through and rebarricaded themselves. There is the one that Dewdrop came running from, and then there's one more entrance. So, and it sounds like you've got the wombats uh, taking care of that first entrance. Nettle's headed towards the second entrance. How are we splitting things up here? Who's going with which group? Uh, Sturt's going to go with Nettle. Okay. Anyone else going in Nettle's group? Uh, Blue, too. Blue? Okay, so it's Sturt, Nettle, and Blue. I think maybe me and Digger go to the other one. Okay, and then Digger and Snowball uh, to the other one. Okay, well, so let's let's follow Digger and Snowball first because you guys haven't gotten to get as much screen time lately. Uh, so you can find that entrance with no problem because you know you've lived here your whole life. You know where that entrance is. You find it plugged up with. Uh, some rocks and recently uh, scraped up dirt. It looks like the uh, the other members of the Warren kind of barricaded themselves in when they saw the devils coming. So you're it's it's no trouble to dig through that because it's such fresh uh, dirt. But as you enter the Warren, I'd like you to both roll to resist panic because you are now going into confined spaces underground where you know that there are two Tasmanian devils uh, running around.
And I got a 12. Okay. So Snowball gets a 12, and then Digger gets a 3. Is that what I'm seeing there? Yeah, that's right. Um, all right. Uh, so, so which of you went in first? Who is in the lead? Um, I'll go in the lead. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm a little more swift on my feet right now. Considering his nose injury. Digging out the hole. Okay. So. Okay. So, so Digger, you go in first. Um, and you kind of bust through uh, that that blockage of uh, that blockage, and you are uh, immediately tackled by something. You don't see what it is uh, or what's got you, but something has grabbed you and and pinned you down. So you take plus one panic. And you need to make a split second decision about uh, what you're going to do with whatever it is that has uh, tackled you. Are you going to uh, are you going to fight it, or are you going to uh, you're going are you going to try to just wriggle free? Are you going to uh, you know, play dead. Um, so I think I'm going to take kind of something from Snowball's earlier advice. And I think we've actually come here like with in our hands, we've got one of, one of the loose um, thorn things from Spike's uh, back. One of the ones that like would come out, we each have one. And mm -hmm. I just, I just, I just like jab frantically at the thing. Okay, um, and and then would like try and get out from its grasp. Okay, um, so you you stab with this uh, echidna needle, and the the thing that had grabbed you uh, jumps back, lets go of you, and yells in uh, a familiar voice. Ow, what the heck is that? And you suddenly realize that that was Charcoal, who was waiting by the entrance in case of intruders uh, and had tackled you. And you have now stabbed Charcoal uh, really badly uh, in the paw. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Why it doesn't do matter. That? It doesn't matter, Charcoal. I thought you were a devil. Here. I thought you were a devil bursting into our burrow. I well, thought you were the devil. Here, so just get out. What? Do we need to run? What is that the plan? I don't even know. What's going on? I've heard like screams from other parts of the, the Warren, but I don't understand what's going on. Nobody's told me anything. I, I think maybe before we all rushed in, except for maybe Nettle, we you know, came up with a direction to tell everyone to run, mm -hmm. maybe. So. Yeah. But yeah, just, the devils are already in here. Just just go. Go that way. Okay, so it sounds like you're trying to speak plainly. Yeah. To reason with a panicked uh, charcoal. Yep. It's plus shrewd, right? Uh, yes. So that is seven. All right. So uh, they do as you ask, provided you meet one of their demands now. Um, so I think charcoal just asks to keep the echidna needle. Because that, that like that was a pretty cool weapon. Uh, once, once you're not being, you know, stabbed by it. You know, once once charcoal gets the uh, the needle out of their paw, uh, so they asked to keep the the echidna needle. Fine, you can take mine. 
just keep moving, and if you pass any other rabbits, tell them to go that way too. Uh, Charcoal says, yeah, there's a, a group that are, are huddled in the, the west hallway. Um, you might want to go, go find them, but I, I'm taking off now. And Charcoal goes running, holding the echidna needle in their teeth. Uh, All right, so head towards that group. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so you find them. Uh, you know, there's a, a a main hallway area, and there's you know half a dozen rabbits kind of huddled in there, uh, listening carefully for uh, the sounds of of devils. They've got the other end of the hallway blocked up a little bit. Um, and they're they're surprised and happy to see you return, uh, but you know also very afraid because there's devils invading their warren. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just kind of you know tell them you know we'll we'll find everyone else. We'll you know. We'll get everyone out of here. Y'all just y'all head out the way that we came in. It's safe right now. Uh, you know, and tell them which direction to go. And yeah. All right. We'll, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. So they'll they will go along with that yeah. and uh, hustle on out. Um, so let's swap them back over to the other three of you. So you're going in through door number two. Um, so in your case, who's going in first? Uh, Nettle was already on his way in. So. Okay, Nettle's in the lead. Okay, so uh, Nettle, why don't you also roll a resist panic since you're likewise going into a confined space where there might be a Tasmanian devil around any corner. So, I rolled a five. A five. All right. So, you'll take one panic. Um, and, yeah, because as you, as you burst through uh, the... The dirt, um, you can smell the clear smell of a Tasmanian devil. And you hear the devil's voice uh, says, uh, welcome home, bunny. We've been expecting you. And you can feel that the dirt from that was blocking the hole that you kind of burrowed through has kind of fallen in a little more and has uh, got you a little bit stuck in the doorway. Okay, and, and I'm assuming then that the devils are very close here. Yeah, you can't, you can't see it, uh, but you know, you can hear it's a voice from around the corner. Yeah, and so, you can definitely smell it. So I, I think what I'm going to try to do is to extract myself from. Metal tries to extract himself from the the dirt, and I, I'll, you know, yell okay. back to the others. The, the, the devils are here. They're here. Okay, so you should roll to dig to see how easily, see if you can extract yourself in time, because uh, the devil is close and uh, coming after you. And I got a, a f on that one, and I need to check my, that one is a three. 
A three. Yeah. Because that's with strength, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. I rolled a four and I'm a minus one on strength. So that would be a three. Okay. So you go to try to uh, dig yourself out, uh, but you only make things worse and you hurt yourself in the process of trying to move this dirt around. There are a few big rocks in it that they had uh, kind of pushed around in the effort to block this entrance. So you're going to take a scar from that. So why don't you decide which move you want to permanently lose and then tell us how you hurt yourself uh, in a way that uh, fits that. Yeah, I, I guess um, I'll say I lose the... Um, Uh, I'll, I'll lose the um, my special um, what is it called dull and keen. Why don't we say that you know I'm I'm kind of in there and my keen sense is my my eyesight. Mm -hmm. but as I'm kind of thrashing around, I and with all this dirt and it's gritty and some of it kind of is now gets in my eye and I've kind of scratched my one of my eyes okay. pretty badly. And so okay. that, that kind of sense of sight that was so keen is now lost. All right. Sounds good. Okay. And so uh, Blue and Sturt, you've seen uh, Nettle go in there and seems to be trapped in this dirt and struggling uh, pretty bad. Uh, you weren't able to hear anything. You know, you, you didn't hear the devil uh, talking to him. You didn't smell it or anything, but you can see that Nettle seems to be in trouble. So what are you going to do? I think you'll try to dig him out. Yeah, Sturt's going to go uh, try and dig him out as well. We're going to work together. Maybe uh, you okay. go on the left, We go. I go on the right, and we dig out on both sides. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So one of you roll a uh, dig and the other one can roll to help on that. Very strong, right? Yes. Okay. That is my, my best stat. Yeah, so okay. I'll roll to help. <laughs> All right. I got a seven plus two is nine. Okay. So uh, Sturt, if you want to roll to help, you'd roll with strong as well. Uh, I did not help. You didn't. You didn't help. I got a four. <laughs> oh, that's not very helpful. Okay, so on a on a seven to nine. So, um, would you prefer uh, you only dig enough space to squeeze yourself into? So basically, you could dig through into it, but you wouldn't free uh, nettle from it, or your excavation is unstable and temporary or uh, you take significantly longer than, expect than expected. You're muted. I'm okay with temporary and then unstable because that's all I need as long as it gets him out. Okay, so yeah, you, you managed to dig enough that Nettle can get free of there. Uh, so Nettle, you can uh, squeeze back out of the burrow. And as you do, some more dirt and rocks uh, kind of fall in. Now, is that the only way in, or was can we get into the burrow this way at all? So there's the three 
entrances. Okay. This, so this entrance is completely blocked off now. I mean, you'd have to redig it out some more because uh, it's it's collapsed in. So it would be easier for you if you wanted to get into the burrow to go through either the one where Digger and Snowball have gotten in or the kind of front door where the wombats are. Maybe we should go with the wombats. They're big and scary and it's probably safer with, with them and then we won't get stuck because they're digging for us. Did you did you hear about wombat or devils here? Nettle? The yes, the, the the devils are down in this hole. They were they were telling me that they were coming after me. They were welcoming me into the burrow because they said they were basically waiting there for me. Let's go back to the wombat. And do we hear anything as we leave? Are they digging through the devils or? What's that? I'm sorry. Are the devils dig still digging through on the other side or? Um, well, if you. I cannot. If you want to pay attention, you could find that out. I, I am incapable of paying attention. Oh, that's your that's your scar. All right, so you can't nothing. you can't hear anything. I, I think you can notice. I think Nettle will stay now that he's out of there. He's gonna stay there, and and is gonna see if if there's any sign of these devils coming there and and actually i think nettle will will even yell a little bit saying come and get me if you can devils i'm not afraid of you okay um i mean that sounds like if you're trying to deliberately taunt them to try to get them to do something i think that kind of fits under uh speak plainly you're not exactly reasoning with them, but it's kind of the same, same yeah. spirit. So if you want to try to taunt them into actually doing something, then yeah. roll speak plainly. Okay, I'll do that. And you know, my intention is if they are there, if I can get their attention and use myself as a little diversion, that's what mm -hmm. I'm going to be attempting to do. So, okay. Um, if you're staying though, Blue's not going to leave you alone with this. <laughs> so All right. I, I rolled an eight. Okay. You got an eight. Um, so provided you meet one of their demands now. So they can't, you know, they're not really in a position to like negotiate with you over this. Uh, but I think if... Um, trying to think of a, a good thing that you could do that would make this more appealing for them to come after you. Um, I was thinking maybe proximity, if I stay mm -hmm. really close so that they can get a good whiff of me. <laughs> yeah, well, so let's say that actually, so when all this stuff kind of fell in, you know, it, it blocked the entrance, but it, it left a little bit of a, a hole there um so if you kind of you can kind of stick your your face in there uh to yell to them okay so you can't actually you can't get yourself all the way in but you can there's enough of a hole like kind of underneath a rock that kind of blocks some stuff that you can like stick your face in there to yell to them uh and they'll be able to hear you clearly and kind of smell that you're in the tunnel okay uh, that, I'll do that. I'll I'll kind of All right. go there and keep taunting them. Okay, so you do that, and um, you know because of the way it is, you can't really see in there once you've got your face in there to yell at them. Uh, and so the first thing that tells you you've gotten any response from this 
is a big whiff of uh, devil breath as one of them uh, comes right up to that hole and kind of like must be like sticking its snout into the other end of that hole uh, and says, looks like we're having bunny for lunch. And then you hear a bunch of kind of scraping and scratching as the devil starts to dig out uh, the blockage from its side. Okay. And, and I'll look at Blue and say, Blue, I think we, we might want to be getting ready to lure them down to the trap. Okay, just get your face out of there. <laughs> yeah, and I think I will back out like with when I really kind of see that that there's uh digging that's really going. Yeah. And I think you pull your face back just in time uh for the the devil's head to kind of burst out in like a a shower of of dirt and small rocks as it's pushing its way through. And it kind of snaps at you and it looks around and it sees that there are three of you there and eyes kind of uh, light up. And so this is, this is not the one that blue tangled with before. Actually, no, I think it, it's, it will be better if it is actually the one that blue tangled with before. So this so, is my move. It doesn't matter. Right. But I think for, for the story, it'll be better if it's that one. Uh, so you can see that there's like a big ugly scab on its nose uh, that you recognize that you gave it during that encounter before. Um, and uh, I think I turned to stir and tell uh, him to run because he can't really. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a head start. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, because this devil is now pulling its way through this dirt. So everybody who's still hanging around is going to have to decide what they're going to do when there's a, a devil uh, right on top of them. So are you going to confront it? Or are you going to run from it? Um, retreating, but not fully. Yeah, and, and Nettle is is kind of the same. I mean, what, what's on Nettle's mind is if I can get stay so that I'm not going to get eaten by this uh, devil, but I want to to be in a position to lure the devil away. Okay. Well, so this this devil is going to chase after you mm -hmm. and try to eat you wherever <laughs> you are. Okay. Like well, that, that is clearly its agenda as soon as it gets through this dirt. Correct. And then I'll... it is going to run straight for you to eat you. And so and so I would be making trying to make my way down to where the trap is. Okay. So uh, we're we're going to call that a bolt. Um and actually, uh, before, before we have you make your bolt, uh, so because I think you've been confronting this particular devil uh, for a bit now, but uh, the other two of you uh, are, are seeing this one now for the first time as it's coming bursting out. So why don't you roll to resist panic? Uh, blue and start. Uh, wait, isn't it Nettle and Sturt? Or, no. Wait. Because Nettle, Nettle is, I'm saying Nettle doesn't need to resist panic because Nettle uh, has been dealing with this particular devil for a little bit in this scene. So hey. the other two of you that are here, that are seeing it for the first time as it pops out of the, the hole here, are the ones that I want to try to resist well, panic. I, I don't actually need to resist panic either. Um, okay. I, I all right, because you've got the, the move. Okay. Yeah. So okay, so blue, you're good. So it's actually just okay. start then. <laughs> yeah, I was I was confused. Sorry. I thought okay. you had mixed up uh blue and nettle. No. And that is going to be a ten. Okay. So you you keep it together uh, as you are getting your head start uh, running off. So now, Nettle, if you're going to try to lure that the devil 
away. We should roll to bolt. I had a six. A six. I would like to roll to help. Okay. Since that was the plan. All right. Um, Go ahead and like do that. Moving with you. Uh -huh. All right. So Probably yelling. Okay. So roll your roll and add your swift to see if you can help. Nope. That's a five. Okay. No help from you. So. Uh, so Nettle, you are at a you got a six. So let's see. So yeah, so this this devil uh, comes charging out after you, uh, and um, cause the obvious thing is just to. Uh, chomp down on you and give you another scar. Can I, he's not going after me, but mm. if he's going after Nettle specifically, like as he passes, can I um, tooth and claw him? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so Nettle, I think Nettle's, I still want Nettle to take that scar uh, because of the, the failed roll there, but, then blue can roll tooth and claw uh, to clobber the devil and prevent any further uh, harm. Yes. So I, I think the scar I would take would be, um, I guess one that would make sense would be the, the bolt. I like, like, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the devil is able to kind of, bite down on part of my leg and kind of cut mm. a, a muscle there, uh, you know, important muscle in my, in my leg. So I have a little blood now and mm. uh, I'm kind of hobbling a little bit. Okay. So you've taken that scar and so now blue roll your tooth and claw. That is 10, yeah, 10. All right, so uh, it says they take a scarf, they don't flee. I, I can't imagine this Tasmanian devil being willing to flee, uh, at least just yet. So tell us how you di dish out a scar to the devil. I think... I sort of in passing lash out with like my, my front paws and like rabbits have claws as well. Yeah. But I think I want to make it, a, make it so that uh, he can't run. Okay. Essentially yeah. removing bolt. Okay. But, like break his front um, leg or something. Yeah, yeah. You could totally, you could totally break his leg. Um, yeah. So you you lash out and grab it, uh, his leg and kind of uh, dislocate it or break it or something. And uh, you know that will kind of you know he had chomped down on. Uh, on nettle and he lets go and yelps a it's a really embarrassing kind of yelp you know the, the devil had had that kind of scary growly low voice before but this is kind of a a squeak not too dissimilar from the squeak of that little marsupial mouse that you stepped on earlier uh or that somebody stepped on earlier uh but just uh, just a really embarrassing uh squeak that the devil uh, lets out, um, and it kind of hustles back into the the burrow, kind of looking like it's just looking for a place to hide because it just got beaten up a second time by a bunny 
uh, which is not how it's supposed to happen. Okay, so let me swap back over to uh, Digger and Snowball. So you've gotten a bunch of the rabbits out of the warren. There are still, you know, if you're counting heads here, um, you know, I guess if we go watership downwise, you, you can't count above four, but, you know, there are particular rabbits that you can think of that uh, you have not seen yet. And so you know that they're still in the warren somewhere uh, potentially threatened by the other Tasmanian devil that is stalking around. So what are you up to? Uh, I think I kind of, you know, like put my ear to like the ground and listen and kind of feel for like vibrations and stuff to kind of get an idea of where others might be. Yeah. All right. So that sounds like you're trying to pay attention there yeah. with your sense of hearing. That is a nine. Okay. So you, uh, get to ask one question and again don't feel limited to the questions listed in the move uh, let's see as how do i get to the others okay so as you are listening um, you, you can hear two different sets of vibrations or sounds. Uh, and so there's, so you're in this hallway and it kind of forks and to one side to the right, uh, is where you can hear that there are some rabbits to the left is where you can hear that there is what sounds like it might be that other devil. Um, and so the, the hallway kind of divides and then comes back together again near that front door where uh, the devils had entered things. Uh, so, so basically it sounds like uh, if you get to those you can get to the other rabbits, but then you're going to have to make a break for either back the door you came in or out the front door uh, that will take you kind of past where the devil can can get to you. Uh, I want to suggest. So, to... Hopefully, the my explanation, like spatial explanation, yeah. makes sense. Um, so, so, I want to suggest a digger. Uh... Let, let me have your uh, quill and I'll do what I can to distract the the devil and you get everyone else out. I think I'll like just nod kind of I'm still a I little mean, stunned and I'll hand him the quill. You're faster than me so you can get them out. I'll I'll be the bait. Just take like a deep, like gulping breath and steady myself and head down towards, you know, I'll kind of point out, you know, the others are that way. I'm going to head this way and distract them. Okay. All right. So you're you're going in then? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that other group of rabbits, once you reach them, is seems to be everyone else that was in the warren. So between uh, the first group that you rescued and this group, uh, there's nobody you can think of that is missing. So this seems to be the last of them. And they're they're very 
uh, excited to see you, but also very worried uh, that you're now possibly trapped in here with uh, them and this devil that is sniffing around looking for them. And they're, they're basically looking to you. Uh, they're, they're asking you what they should do. So, bigger snowball, uh, what are you telling these frightened uh, other rabbits? I think that's up to Digger, because like I said, I went in the opposite direction towards the okay. devil. I'm just insisting, like, like now is not the time. You need to get out of here. Like, just trust me on this. Like, now is the time to get out of here. Okay. Are you pointing them towards the front door or the back door where you came in? The door we came in. Okay. Okay. Um, so... Uh, why don't you roll to um, speak plainly to see how convincing you are that uh, it's a good idea to make a break for it. What's the modifier on that? Uh, that one is shrewd. Okay, I've got a seven. Seven? Okay. Um, so their demand, uh, they, I'm trying to think what's something, what's something good they can ask you for, um, so I think they just want reassurance that uh, you'll make sure that the devil doesn't get them. We've got we've got something something different planned for those devils outside. We just have to get there, and and if they try and get us, then we'll really show them what's what. We've got a devil trap, so get there, and you'll be safe for sure. All right, so they will take your reassurance because. Uh, what other options do they have at this point? Trapped in this burrow with the Tasmanian Devil. Uh, and so they will go ahead and make a break for it. Um, and their, their going creates enough commotion, enough sound, uh, that the, the devil picks up on it. And you can hear the devil come running down its side hallway that it was in uh, towards all of you. So, I believe so I think, you were in decoy position. Yeah, I think as you know, I started going down that other tunnel. I took the, uh, I took the quill that I had, and kind of buried the, you know, non pointy end in a little bit, so it's kind of sticking up at an angle. And okay. I went a little further past it. And I'm waiting for the devil to run at me, and my plan is to hop over it, and hopefully he'll spike himself. Okay. Um, so the devil does, in fact, uh, come around and sees you. And uh, I think this devil recognizes you as one of the bunnies that's been out and about outside um, and kind of grins at you and uh, says, oh, I believe it's lunchtime, Bunny, and lunges towards you. Uh, I think as soon as he lunges towards me, I, you know, turn around and start, you know, and my intention is I know which way Digger's taking them out, so I'm going to try and lead him the other way. But like I said, I've got that spike there to jump over. And, uh, you know, okay. I figure this is going to curvy and small. Uh, so 
so I'd like to use the ace in the hole, which is the move I took. Okay. I think that would apply here. Yep. Yeah, I was starting to think about putting together a custom move for all this, but that I think the ace in the hole uh, works well for you. Uh, I'd forgotten you had that one. So yeah, go yeah, ahead and roll it. An 11. So. An 11. Okay. Uh, so you make a run for it. Um, the devil lunges after you, uh, comes kind of scrabbling around a corner right where you've got the quill set up uh, and stomps right down on, on that quill. And the whole warren kind of echoes with this screech from uh, the devil that has just gotten impaled on this quill. Uh, and it's no longer in, con in a good condition to run after you. So you're able to get out with the other, uh, the other frightened rabbits back out of the warren. Okay, so we have uh, one devil with a quill in its paw, uh, kind of incapacitated deep in the warren. We've got another one that uh, f fled back into the warren to hide. Uh, all the bunnies are outside. So what is your next move here? Where are the wombats? They uh, have been digging through that front door, which got uh, buried in pretty good. It's, a, it's a, a good idea. It's a good thing that the escapees from underground didn't head for that front door because it got buried pretty deep. Plus, as wombats, they need to dig a much bigger hole to get through than rabbits or even Tasmanian devils would need. So, like, all the rabbits have kind of gathered out front, I think. Mm -hmm. And I... Probably with Nettle, because we talked to them together earlier. Um, just tell them that the... Both of the devils are in are in there, but injured. Okay. Yeah, um, and, and I guess you know we'll because um, they don't really know about the new Warren that we have found, right? I mean that right. They knew you were going to look for right. a potential new Warren. You have certainly not had time thus far to. Uh, explain all of this to them. Yeah, and there's probably not time to explain it all now, but Nettle will say, we have found a safe place for a new Warren and we need to we need to make the move now. Okay, uh, I think at this point, I'm not going to make you roll for that because I think all of the other rabbits are very open to the idea of a, a new Warren at this point after what has happened to them here. Uh, and the, the wombats, you know, you explain to the wombats the condition of these two devils and the wombats, you know, think about it for a second and they're like, all right, we can handle those two injured devils but remember that you made us a promise about the humans that uh, you will you will make sure that the humans and their mining operation don't interfere with our new Warren. Uh, and we wish you well in your uh, your journey to your new Warren. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's traps over there. You can push rocks down onto them if you can get them in. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see if we need that. Okay. So I feel like this is a good spot then. Uh, we've had our kind of climax to the story. Why don't we go around 
And, um, you know, so the plan then is for all these rabbits to go to that new rock outcropping and start a new warren there. Um, why don't we just go around and have everybody tell me one thing about uh, your life and or the life of the Warren as a whole after this uh, set of adventures. And we just go in whatever order. As soon as you think of something cool, uh, just jump in and tell me one thing about how life goes for you and or for the Warren going into the future. You know, I, I think w one thing about the the new Warren is, and, and we had kind of thought about this last week, that I think we start living there and we come across a sign that this is in fact the Warren that Ash had previously been in. And I think we find that by, you know, when we're kind of moving in after a few days when we are in there um, and we're kind of like cleaning things out and, and kind of doing some new excavations in there. Um, I mean, maybe Ash had, you know, some type of, you know, telltale that that he would leave behind a, a kind mm -hmm. of mark on on a, a kind of piece of of stone and we kind of come across this sign that oh this is actually where we had all started from can i make a suggestion me. yeah maybe they've left like some mark on the warren that we just left like when we moved in and there's a matching one on this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Who else? I think uh, for Snowball, you know, this whole experience has made him a whole lot braver. Uh, even though he got his leg messed up and everything, but, uh, you know, he used to be concerned about, you know, keeping his fur clean and whatnot, even though it was made him a stick out, and, you know, wasn't much of a digger. And I think now from the time he spent with digger, uh, you know, he's got more respect for digging the warrants and whatnot. And so he's kind of, you know, throwing himself more into that. All right. Um, so for Sturt, uh, Sturt, um, definitely after this and through all the things that he experiences hanging around blue and stuff, he kind of, you know, stays home at the Warren more and, and takes care of everybody and is, a storyteller in the Warren and tells stories about how we moved here at all the new rabbits and stuff. And um, he teams up with blue <laughs> to go out and get more stories sometimes when he didn't used to go out as much. So. All right. And I think blue goes out a little less than she used to as well, because she has a harder time paying attention to things these days. Uh -huh. um, but having Sturt there is like, sorry, my rats are fighting. Um, it's kind of like eyes and ears because, sorry, hold on. <laughs> Um, since Nettle can't see as well either, I kind of need that 
so we're we kind of like go out and like explore and i think we we find signs of the previous generations of our own warren that have lived here to like probably a couple graves or whatever just signs i don't think we ever find out why this place was abandoned though next time all right um so i think that um digger and spike realize in this warren the ambition that they that that digger had in the previous warren but also like an augmented thing that spike loves where um digger and spike managed to find a water source near enough that they can dig a water path to bring water close to the to the warren for use but also they find um or more accurately spike finds a uh a nest of termites that is close enough that they can build a termite path so that just a f enough termites wander this way down that path on the regular that, that Spike doesn't have to travel far for his food. <laughs> okay. And was that everybody? I think that's everyone. Okay. So I noticed nothing was said about fulfilling the promise to the uh, the wombats. Um, yeah. I, so I think we are incapable of fulfilling it's probably, <laughs> probably best for you to stay on your, your new side of the road then. Uh, the wombats won't be happy to see you all uh, around uh, after you, you betrayed them. Uh, but they did get that other Warren back, so they they still got something out of the deal. So, all right, so that was the Warren. So I'm going to stop the broadcast and uh, do some quick stars and wishes, uh, and that'll be it.